sh stop, don't tell me anything. Um, and you'd better, <laughs> you'd better choose something I'm willing to sit for down for. I know you're willing to sit through this. Because you've sat through <laughs> this, but not this. We saw this oh. as a play. Oh. And because I had seen the movie and I knew it was a fun movie. Uh, ah, no, no. <laughs> is it Death Trap? Uh, nope, no, it's not Death Trap. No, 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 oh. it's not Death Trap. But um, okay. it's, it, it, oh, and uh, I, is it the Agatha Christie one? No, that, that's the one that it doesn't nobody make a film. Uh, hmm. <laughs> How about I just play the movie and we find the outie? <laughs> I want one more guess. One, one more, more guess. guess. Okay. One more guess. Um, give me a hint. <laughs> uh, 1945. It's not going to hint you very much because I don't think you know it's from 1945. You could guess it's from 1945. It is in color. It's the English production in color. Yeah, in 1945. Well they must have had loads of money. And of course, it's a play because that's how we saw it as a play. Okay. Oh my god, we want to see so many plays. I don't know. I don't think you can <laughs> particularly remember this one, but it was the a good color one. part is surprising. Even in America, they, they, they were struggling to make color in uh, 45. Yeah, it's got everybody who's a star in England in it. <gasps> okay, uh, 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 I can't even come up with them. David Niven? Uh, he was in Hollywood at the time. I don't think he was there. Um, ah, okay, now I can't stand I it anymore. So just roll, roll first. Roll film. Roll film. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, I love it when they shake. <laughs> I was shaking still. Yeah. Somebody's actually churning at that point. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> when, when did we see this on? In, yes, in London. We went to see this. I don't remember a thing about it. I know. <laughs> like, literally nothing. I barely remember. I don't, didn't remember that we went to see it. Okay. I do remember you going on about that. We should go see it. Yes. <laughs> okay. In so, technical. Uh, Mel Card right, uh, has written this play and it was on stage, of course. Um, so the vibe is going to be a little bit pre war ish uh, because it is 1945. They don't want to talk about the war anymore. So <laughs> I think they're probably going to completely uh, ignore the war because it's from before that time. So there you go. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. Yep. Um, well, um, you know the first name. <laughs> Yeah, Rex Harrison, um, My Fair Lady, uh, a hundred other things. He also did uh, blah, blah, blah. Camelot on stage, I think. Um, but I, yeah, Margaret Rutherford, I know the name, but the she rest played, I don't know. Uh, Miss Marple later on. She mm. was, so she's, <laughs> and, and she played uh, uh, the school uh, teacher from The Importance of Being Earnest, if you remember that. You know, the film, the film from the film. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was very good. She was very good. <laughs> uh, the ladies, the two ladies uh, are British ladies, which never became. F um, hey, I think the Con Constance Commons, it may be the same lady who played Harriet Vane. Uh, the Busman's Holiday, uh, uh, 1940. Okay, I can look that up. I think she was called Constance. Uh, born 1910. Uh, Seattle, Washington, and died in 2005, age uh, fantastic, 95 years old, in Oxfordshire, England. So she went to the UK. Uh, she was British, uh, British American born, uh, British, uh, half British, half American. That's why she was in that movie. Um, yeah. So I think this is the same lady. Bosman's Honeymoon, as Harriet Vane. Yes, 1940. See? Yep, that's her. <clears throat> Um, she has a very, very long list of filmography. Very, very long. Well done. Yeah. The play is from Cornell Coward, and, and, and these people are the ones who adapted it. Yeah, and uh, he's also the director, uh, I see here, and... Um, yeah, David Lean, was, this is a David Lean film, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, pretty early for him, I think. 
Um, so there's a, the, the fact that it's in Technicolor is, and they call it technical photography. Um, and there are Oscar winning visual effects. And yes, they movie. are. There are because so uh, for yeah. for a British movie to win any sort of Academy Awards is just um, unusual. Um, so it must have taken America by storm as well. Uh, and there, it was in, restored by the British film industry for the release in 2008. So that would be would have been a DVD release or possibly they put it back in the film in the theaters as well. Okay, so no coward um, had turned down offers from Hollywood <laughs> because he did not li like how some of his uh, plays had been previously um and they quote vulgarized uh, by uh american versions basically what he meant is that they touched his, their play, his plays at all because he was a nitpicker on that sure. front. <laughs> and i don't yeah. think, uh, if they picked and if they changed anything here it would have been in in a conclave with no coward and they probably didn't change them as much i mean the only thing they changed is how uh stuff that had to do with actual filming as in something that is on stage you can have two spaces on stage whereas in filming you have to do it differently that's the only changes i expect to be in this i expect this to be word perfect to the play basically mm -hmm. yeah me too because he he did two other uh projects with were, that were written by noel coward uh one is called in which we serve i have heard of the film i've not seen it and this happy breed and this movie, uh, Blythe Spirit, was filmed at Denim Studios in May of 44. So even though it came out May of 45, um, that may have had to do with just logistics. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you already have a very happily married couple. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Adam's family at this point. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you got the, the, one of the things about the Adam's family is so much fun because everybody. This is like the most put together, well put together, functional family in the history of families. <laughs> everybody loves each other. Everybody lets themselves, lets everybody be who they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. doesn't get any better than that. Yes. <laughs> so, good start. Great start. So she's they wear a stripey, stripey um, dressing gown. I think so. the The actual clothing is going to be underneath that, and the the maid is wearing ye all the maid uniform. And the whole shot, the whole shot was to show her in all the beautiful Technicolor in the beautiful clothing yeah. and, the, and the stripy the blue and white is saying we're in color we're in color we're in color <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah. now talk about framing look at that um and the other the, the one thing that that we, we were watching another movie uh which uh was like five um recorded like five years earlier in black and white uh in another um stream uh and uh, but it was in black and white and it did the framing like this one it did it, it, this whole this framing thing um but now you notice that the, that the, <laughs> the walls are pink <laughs> they may have been pink in the black and white movie you don't know <laughs> we don't know <laughs> It's one of the reasons why some sometimes a, a film that is colorized from a black and white to a color comes across very jarring because if they go and do the research and it turns out, yes, the wall was pink. And then you put, come over black and white to a pink wall. You sort of go, oh my gosh. It's that... quite in your face. Yeah. It's quite in your face. Um, it's in your face here as well. So, yeah. yeah. They, they are getting much better at colorizing though. But they still have to go with what was on the wall. And if this is on the wall, then it's going to be on the colorized version. Yeah. And that's the Margaret Weatherford. <laughs> um, she's wonderful. I, I think uh, 
enjoy her, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what she's wearing, but it's still... So, <clears throat> um, the closure is at the back. <laughs> so you have to ask somebody to help you. It's from a time when people... No, you have to learn to be a contortionist. No, you had to dress lady <laughs> you were in, in, in uh, earlier. When, when you lady who wears these kinds of clothes, you have somebody to dress you and your occasional husband because she does have a maid running around. So if, if hubby isn't there, a maid can do it. But yeah, uh, and learn to be a contortionist. Yes, but she doesn't have a lady's maid. Uh, I'm not sure if that maid isn't a lady's maid. I wouldn't be too, too surprised. <laughs> you know... Downton Abbey never got to 1945, so who knows how it was done. <laughs> we need Downton Abbey to tell us how it was done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he does have an immortal line there. Uh, oh my god, I'm, not, I'm blanking on it now. He said something really cool. Oh, honesty. Um, it's amazing how people are more shocked by honesty than by deceit. <laughs> that's paraphrasing, but that's that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. and how little yeah. how little shocked they are at deceit. Uh, very, <laughs> very, and it's correct actually, because people are like, oh, don't talk about da 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 da. Well, yeah, not be too blunt. And and Dutch yes. is a re a Dutch is no. a really good at being blunt, so <laughs> we know about it. <laughs> Could you tell some lovely lies, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> Instead, you know, don't don't don't, you know. <laughs> so yeah. He is a very happy um, widower, isn't he? Uh, this is the new, the new missus. He's married to this one now. So, yes, mm -hmm. he is not a not not a merry merry widower anymore. He's a merry 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 married person now. <laughs> you can see when she goes down the stairs, you'll see that that the dress she's wearing it's almost the same fashion as nineteen forty, which would like I said, we were watching earlier because in, in five years, nothing has happened in, in evening wear. Just nothing. The, the uh, asymmetry, that's that's new in, in, in that way. But hmm. and I can see the dress, um, yeah. her dress with the asymmetry, and but the, the, the silhouette with the shoulders like this and still going going in a, a, a little bit a bit of a triangle and then flat, go, going down almost straight down that's fully 1940 just continued um, mm -hmm. uh, and the the man uh of the couple arriving uh we have seen several times now that he he is he's got some slits in his teeth which you wouldn't see in hollywood because no. they would send them all to the uh, to have their teeth capped yeah. the moment they arrive in Hollywood. Um, so this is not Hollywood. Uh, yeah, this, they still would have done some work in England, but a lot less than in Hollywood, yes. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, except for uh, uh, Constance Cummings, who was half British, I think everybody here is British. Uh, and I think um, so. Yeah, all the cast is uh, British. Most of them are English. Those that say British don't say what kind of British, so I can't guess. And the narrator at the beginning was Noel Coward. Who was, has a very good speaking voice, also singing voice, and, and can do that easily. Not, <laughs> he doesn't have to break a sweat for it. And it's uncredited in the movie, so you won't see it in the, mm. the end titles or beginning titles. Yeah. I think uh, Noel Coward would have had more more uh, confidence in a British project versus an American project anyway, because British, oh, yeah. he, well, British he made. Didn't, he didn't want to sell it to Americans anymore because he'd done that several times. So. Yeah, but also also uh, he's British. They are British. The whole thing is British. It's British, 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 and and the British the Brits get what makes it British. Which is very Noel Coward is to make it something very uber British, and then uh, then the Americans don't get the points, and then they mess up the points. <laughs> yeah, but you can transpose. Uh, no, I, what, I don't know yet whether you could transpose this thing, but there there must be ways to transpose it to the culture 
I think if you would, as far as we've seen it now, it's just some banter, especially with banter between him and her, you'd have to do some rewrites because that's not how, how Americans t uh, talk to each other. It's, it's well, how British people you know, talk to each other. In Philadelphia story, there's a lot of banter. So yeah, it's just a but, question of uh, yeah, but having the right people. But then Noel Coward should, should just write it straight up. Just ask him to write an American couple and then he can do that. Of course, and, that's always better. And then it, it's unfair to the play to just take an English a written thing for English people and then say, oh, we're just going to slot in some American actors and do it that way. Because it doesn't work. And then, then you say, oh, I have to adjust a few lines and then it becomes more than a few lines. So you know how that goes down the drain. Well, you have basically you have a reimagining because uh, uh, Queer as Folk did it. They they had a, a, a C4 British production and then they went. I was no coward. I would say yes. if you want to do my play straight up, it's going to cost you X amount. If you want to do a reimagining of my play, it's going to cost you X times two. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I, if you, it's good money, if you can make it. <laughs> Okay, the houses were used. Yes, the for the exterior of the houses, they uh, used a place called Denham Mount uh, for uh, Charles and Ruth's home, and a place called Fairway, um, and it's in Cheapside. I don't know where that is. I'd have to look that up. Uh, it's near London, I think. And, and that's Madame Ar. Arkati's house. I have not met that character yet. Yeah, she's about um, to book in. <laughs> so, like we said, it was it was shot at Denham Studios, so it would be very all, all that stuff would have been very close to the studios. So, I would say at this point, from a 2022 perspective, um, we have these ladies who are all dolled up. And they comport themselves as ladies. Hair now up. we have Hair Madame Arcati walking into the the place, and she takes charge. She uh, she has uh, the etiquettes down, but her decorum is much more down to earth, much more uh, less uh, elegant. Um, she's nominally wearing the feminine clothing. Uh, and her hair short, which is allowed. Yeah, she's older, so she, so ha having hair short is probably not a, not an issue. I, I still don't think that the cut she has is a very fashionable cut. No, but it would uh, work today. It would work Literally, today. She, 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 this is modern. This is perfectly modern for our standards. For yeah, we've, me, that's that's over fifty. In <clears throat> in those in those days, it would have maybe looked very wild and unkempt. But now we go like, yep, she's. She's got it going. She's she knows what she's doing. Uh, she's on her bicycle. She's talking about all the things about her bicycle and uh, the mechanics of it. And she accepts a drink and immediately drinks it. Um, uh, basically, she is um, acting male. <laughs> She also the way she stands. I mean, she, she the reason the dress looks odd on her is because the way she stands wrong for for a female. She yeah. stands with her shoulders a little bit too forward, and um, uh, she did just straighten up completely, yeah, deli very deliberately. Go like this, yes. straight up. Yeah. Yes. Because she remembered somebody in her back of her like, head saying, oh, "Okay, I'm sitting up. down. Oh wait, I, I need to sit up." <laughs> somebody told me to 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 straighten up and be nice. She really does that whole movement, and then accepts a drink, and is probably gonna continue yeah. on her way. And the, the dress, uh, I was looking at that dress, the dress is dreadful, but I think what happened is they, they're they still, uh, the, these kind of dresses are still made, made for the person uh, from a pattern by a, by a fairly competent seamstress, but not not super professional. I mean, professional enough that she gets paid for it. And they would have uh, uh, they would have done a plain cut and they would have put it on her and they said, oh, no, that looks terrible. We need to fe feminize it up with it. And that's why they put the frills on. Those frills uh, are absolutely terrible. No, I'm sorry, but the, the, those, those frills are are what you put on a child's clothing. It's just... And yet to make, to feminize it because I don't, the, her frame is not very feminizing. I mean, not 
uh, any criticism toward Margaret Rut Rutherford, because no, I know she, no. she can be very feminine as she wants to be. I don't think oh, this wants, is the role. The role is that. Um, yeah. um, or at least her interpretation with the director of the role is that because the role of, of the lady, you can interpret it any which way you like. If you if you insert um, uh, Sybil Trelawney from uh, Harry Potter in the same role, that would also work. It's exactly, it, it, it's not a role that requires male or female presence or any presence. It just, the, uh, she just needs to walk in, uh, dazzle everybody and then do her thing, which is what's going to happen next. <laughs> Remember. Why does the, the Edith, the servant, uh, look uh, com uh, constantly like terrified? <laughs> Because um, I, I can actually explain that, but uh, yeah. sit down for this one. All right, <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> and this is the thing that I found out sideways and through some documentaries about. But uh, we have Downton Abbey, which uh, is uh, set before World War One to about 1926, and about the servants. And the servants are already starting to leave. Yeah, get yeah better it's the end of an era. That's what it's an the, end of the, an era. Islands, yeah. And and this this gal is what is left for the next for for this era, which is the same uh, same type of gal that's left for Miss Marple, which is like five about now as well. Miss Miss Marple kept kept having to uh, get these really dumb gals in, try to teach them how to do this sort of job, and then pass them on to some somebody who can actually pay them properly because she was not really couldn't afford to pay very much, but she. But these girls were like the bottom of the barrel in in ability, and so is this one. So this is a girl that's probably been trained by a Miss Marple type of person to mm. be something in a household that actually requires like a Downton Abbey kind of staff, but has like the this maid and maybe a cook and maybe and maybe a driver of some sort, and that's about it. So she's over, uh, she's in over her head, and she's. Uh, young and my, by the time she actually knows something she's gonna graduate to a better place so you lose <laughs> yeah so so that explains why she is not the lady's maid and she will not be zipping up uh ruth's dress and she will if if husband isn't there she will be zipping up she, ruth's she dress. will have to but when he's will, when he's there they're not gonna the make her do that she will open the door. She will op open the front door, which would be the butler's job, but there is no butler. She would uh, bring around the tea trays, which should should be the the footman's footman's job, uh, but there is no footman. She's going to zip up her dress, which is the lady maid's job, but there is no lady maid. maid. She's going to tidy everything up, which should be the scullery, uh, the, 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 the general cleaning maid's job, and but there is no general cleaning maid. She's going to help in the kitchen. That's the scullery maid's job, but that's a we have to come rescue her. This is not good. Yeah, this is the end. This is the end of it. After this, about in in 1950s ish, people did not become servants in households anymore because it starts to, uh, it's too much. You're over asking people, uh, uh, and and there's better jobs to be had in factories. Yeah, and you need proper staff. So if if you're gonna have the full household, uh, then then you need uh. uh a housekeeper, a cook, a lady's maid, and, and a footman and a butler. And what these big you houses know. did, and this is actually not a big house, but if, if it's like a Downton Abbey kind of house, what they did was simply close up half half the house, just close, just close the doors on them, and not service and maintain that. Uh, maybe a general sweep once a year, but that's about it. And live in like in the West Wing. Everybody's living in the West Wing, and they use the, the, the small dining room in, in the West Wing. And the big party now becomes a four people party like this. Because basically they're doing big household stuff in a small house. Maybe they moved from from a big, big, big place, which also because of death taxes and a long story, these places became too too expensive to yeah. keep, uh, which is another different story. But uh, so they sold them off, but then took their lifestyle to a little house like this, and then have just the one uh, maid and one cook and one uh, driver, a, a male person who does everything else that male people do, like driving and. Uh, it caring for the for, for the outside and stuff like that and make do that way yeah so yeah. that's why we're here how <laughs> we're here that's why we're here and i i would say the interiors because this is studio interiors um that 
uh, staircase does not fit the rest of the house because that staircase is actually larger than the staircase it is in little. Downton Abbey and grander. So yeah. it's it's more of a 1940s thought of what these people would have it's, downsized to, but... I'm going to say that, not, especially with British okay. films, you're going to have to say, okay, that's a the, basically they needed a staircase for the shot. Because it's in the script. <laughs> because it's <laughs> in the script. come up and down the staircase. The studio has one staircase. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> So, so that's just paint, the painted the color for this particular movie. <laughs> Not even that. I think it, it's just just the staircase in in the studios for this, and I think the interior of this space, this living room and the bedroom, uh, that's been set up specially for this uh, film. But the staircase and probably the hall that comes with it, probably not, because it's expensive. Um, yeah, even if a film's films cost cost a lot, but uh, one way to keep it cheaper is to share stair share staircases. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> so they have this fancy dinner. What are they eating? Some a good piece of meat, which in 1945 or in, in 44 when they filmed it is pretty good. And peas. It's it's England. <laughs> England. So the uh, I hope so. But the uh, question is, is it mushy peas or is it? <laughs> yeah, that's mushy peas. Um I think uh, uh, when when the when the uh, maid comes back is she should come back with the uh, uh, potato terrine next, which is the thing she's holding is terrine, and uh, she comes from the from the to the right side of the person, so the person can uh, can uh, serve serve themselves from from the yeah. terrine. So she, yeah, she, she did it for, it for the piece. So let's see if she does it again. Yes. Well, so in Downton Abbey, there no w woman was allowed to do that. That was all the footmen, yeah, or the butler, yeah. if they didn't have enough footmen. Yeah, um, and now, now they don't have enough footmen or butlers, so now it's going to have to yeah, be so this, this, this poor maid is is being exploited up the wazoo. Uh, so we have this huge piece of meat, um, and it's 1944 recording, and it is 1945 airing, or, or yeah, the but they only soft they half. They are rations. They are on yeah. rations, these people. They, they served half of that piece of meat that you saw to her. The other half is in the is still in the pot, so she got half of it. I yeah, but they still have to get it. I mean, rations are okay, rations. but this is this and is what people did. Today. That the was same. in the Harriet Vane, the last Harriet Vane book. Same uh, for it, yeah. Is no, they they um, you could the the buying of the meat was rationed. But uh, people got together and they just had livestock, like they had a, a pig or they had several pigs. And then they would, every once in a while, they would slaughter a pig. So they would all pitch in with uh, veggies and stuff to to the pig because veggies weren't on, on rations and people were growing stuff in their gardens. Yeah, that. veggies was being grown by the people in, in yeah. Britain, in their in so, the backyards, so would, in, their, in the, in the yeah. gardens. That and grains and things, you could feed it to the pig. Now, this was this was red meat so this is this is a uh, this is cow and maybe they're uh, uh, rich enough to actually have to own cows somewhere on their land and uh every once in a while um, i think nice i still order. i still maintain for this movie they are ignoring everything to do with the world. everything yes i'm just saying where did they get the big old slab of red meat <laughs> they get it from the fact that they are making a production for a movie that's how they somebody get it somebody paid somebody a lot of money <laughs> no no the, I, I think they're gonna have like a, a professional uh or may, maybe everybody saved their dinner coupons up for this and they're gonna eat it afterwards yeah so yeah, oh, it, get, if that didn't get staff. Eaten, then they're doing something wrong <laughs> Well, the thing is with these shots, uh, it's going to be, uh, it takes hours to make a shot like that, and like, like the, the dinner shot, the, the, the meat's going to be spoiled. I mean, I think they're still going to eat it because it's, it is wartime, but it, it, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, it, it's stuff you don't think about when you don't have to think about it and yeah. you're just watching the movie, but I'm going, wait, rations. <laughs> mm.
Nice bit of framing. Mm -hmm. Heard anything at all? I certainly didn't. Neither did I. I wish I had. I should love to hear something. <laughs> it's you who are playing the tricks, Charles. You're acting to try and frighten us. I'm not. I swear I'm not. It's difficult to think what to say after seven years, but I suppose the good evening is as good as anything else. They left this poor lady lying on the ground for for minutes. It's just just been broke on the ground, and they just left it there. I I think she'll be fine. That's my <laughs> yes. She is largely indestructible, but still, it's nice yes. to actually first not worry about the table, but worry about the lady first. You know, <laughs> even if this lady is just having a performance going on, it's it was worth their time and their money to pay to pay pay the lady to come. Absolutely. <laughs> However, since we're in a play, <laughs> yes, and uh, the, she has the writer on her side. <laughs> yes, so the lady is the real dead. Um... So I'm looking up Ovaltine. <laughs> Don't we, look up Ovaltine. Bad idea. <laughs> we, we are not sponsored by anybody. To I don't say think. Anything. Not sure if an oval team even still exists. Yeah, probably still does exist. It but... still exists. No, it is a milky drink. Uh, which Porridge, is sugary yeah. and malty and sometimes has chocolate and stuff in it. So mm. it's, uh, it's the version of hot chocolates, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't always have hot chocolates. I mean, to, to, to drink hot milk in the evening with sugar is, was a, is a very normal, uh, old fashioned thing to do. So, uh, it's nourishing. It's, uh, it's good for a person. And she turns uh -huh. it down the way that that uh, instead of coffee for for they would have coffee yeah. I think because uh, they did have the dinner and then they had the coffee and then they had the seance and so this is after yeah. so she was fed properly uh, she was paid for her time one assumes mm. and and these people had a a lovely uh, uh, entertaining evening um, they don't know the consequences. They don't know they opened Pandora's box. They don't um, know about the consequences. <laughs> yes, and, and he as she said, there is now there's now someone else uh para paranormal sensitive in, in the room. I'd forget the words that she used. But uh yeah, that's the dude, uh, Seth. He's he's a bit screwed. <laughs> Guys, put the Ah, we can actually see the back of her outfit. Um, uh, any guess on who she is? Uh, no, no, I mean in, in the story? Yeah, 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 she's, she's his uh, deceased wife, obviously. Obviously. There's, uh, there's no question. Seven years, seven years deceased, and so she should be wearing the fashion for 45 minus 7 is uh, 30, uh, 38. And you can see that, that she's wearing an evening gown. Um, the colors, I'm going to assume, because they, they made her up that way, that the colors have gone away. So we don't know what color it was, but it was a light color evening gown. Um, I think probably completely correct. Uh, certainly, well, between 38 and 45, you can see the fashion hasn't, you can see in this shot because the, 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 the 38 one has a little bit going up the shoulder, but the 45 is still doing straight shoulders like that, so, yeah. Listen, Ruth, please. I will not listen to any more of this nonsense. I'm going upstairs to bed now, so you can come in and say goodnight to me, if you feel like it. Well, that's big of her, I must say. Be quiet, you're behaving like a gutter tonight. So he's used uh, what the devil, and he's used it gutter snipe, which is words he uses in uh, My Fair Lady as well. Uh, yeah, but this is my for lady is later than this. Much later, like twenty years later. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's very unusual to hear the word gutter snipe. No, but the play, the play for my for lady is based is from nineteen ten. The top of my head, it's a, it's a short play. <laughs> I don't want to look that up. <laughs> you don't have to look it up. But it's about, uh, it's meant, it's actually written for the time that uh, that it, My Fair Lady is actually in. It's written in that time. It's 1910 um, and written for, because I 
do know that it's written for an actress that he uh, Bernard Shaw worked with a lot, and uh, she was willing to say crude words like bloody and gut and 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 that sort of thing. And uh, it was very shocking that she used uh, blood, not bloody likely. She used at some mm-hmm. point in 1910. So it was very shocking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, <laughs> so 19, 1913. There you go. It was called uh, Pygmalion, and it was George Bernard Shaw. Yeah, exactly. And um, all these, this display became so famous. Uh, and it was, uh, that's why things like, work like Gutter Snipe and all these words that were in that play are now in 1945 are are play, words you can use on, on screen and everybody knows them. Uh, because there was also the, the film, the Pegmalion film from 1937, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, with uh, Leslie Howard as Higgins and... Uh, and um, Wendy Hiller as Eliza, which we w- would like to do at some. I would like to do that at some point. Um, yeah, Nineteen thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yes. Uh, Leslie Howard and uh, Wendy Hiller as Eliza Doolittle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and that's that was a famous famous because there weren't that many famous British movies at all, and it was a famous British movie. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, Leslie Howard was was half in Hollywood and half in in England, so he made sort of sort of one of each once in a while. <clears throat> so there was a it, it is one of the great British movies, and it's, it basically it's a straight up the play with some some alterations, but not many. But everybody's seen it in 1945. Everybody's seen it, so yeah, yeah. And My Fair Lady is from 1964, and it is Rex Harrison. This man as uh, Higgins and Audrey Hepburn, of course, as Eliza. Um, it's 20 years later, 20 years after this. And that was an American production, and of, it was a Leonard and Lowe stage musical from yep. 1956. So they would have used the terminology from the play, but there's a whole lot of changes uh, in the rest of the, the text. Yeah, mostly the. the... It's something we'll talk about another time, <laughs> I think, because uh, this movie. Um, I'll show a good proper shot, shot of the front of her dress in the, in the edit, but uh, the front of her dress. So, so she's wearing an, an evening gown. You can see that by the by the fact that she's got a, a cleavage here and it's made of this fluffy material. Uh, definitely evening wear. Question is, why is, she, why is she wearing evening wear as a ghost? The hair is, is of course, the 19... Uh, sort of... Uh, 1945 interpretation of the 1938 hairdo using yeah. a lady who has 1945 hair with the, the art department doing it up. So they, they have the, it is down because it's 1938 and not, uh, if it's like five years earlier, she would have it up in, in these ringlets and these wavy things. But now she has it down, but she doesn't have, um, the other lady has the hair more curled into itself. She has, has loose curls, but the other lady has it more curled into it going uh, the next stage would be a victory curl where they comes around and it makes this enormous curl, which you can not completely see through, but you can see into um, that the lady is, it, it's still, I think that's like, uh, well, if it's in four, if they filmed it in 44, four victory girls is going to be mashing for 45. So yeah, she's wearing 44 uh, fashion in the hair. The hair is much more dramatic than the clothes in this, in this era. Mm. Why should having a cheese thing for lunch make me see my deceased wife after dinner? You never know. It is rather rich. Why didn't you see your dead husband then? You had just as much of it as I did. This isn't getting us anywhere. No, of course it isn't. So she has a dead husband too. Yeah, well, first it was not clear that her husband was dead. Um, so it's pretty clear what's going to happen next. <laughs> So th- this uh, ghost, um, uh, she, she's she got either, well, she had a little bit of time, obviously, but she doesn't remember what she was doing, or at least she says she doesn't remember. Um, but if we go fast forward uh, to 1990-ish uh, uh, Ghost, the film, mm-hmm. where we have most of our ghost, uh, modern ghost knowledge, is it takes him quite some time to actually affect the world. He, he spends uh, a portion of the film learning how to interact with the world. 
um, and and push and pull things and uh, you know touch stuff. Um, she seems to be quite able and capable. I think Mar Madame Ar Argati or whatever, whatever her name was is very very good and very strong. So I think mm -hmm. that's why she. But the she the lady the the she she said it can happen that there's going to be an, an apparition or or manifestation or something like that. So it happens to her all, all the time. Poltergeist. What does poltergeist do? Well, it breaks things. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's what poltergeists do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, a random question in uh, to the world is like, okay, is this the first time that poltergeists were uh, popularized, is or, or is it already in other stuff? Because they do explain what a poltergeist is and what it does. She, she the Madame Agati explains it. Um, is were there more poltergeists earlier than this? Because poltergeists well, are now pretty much a very common horror element. Um, the, the only way to find that out was would be if we researched uh, uh, horror movies of the 1930s and 20s. And the question is, do we want to do that? Uh, personally, probably not. Um, however, the Brits have a long uh, history of of uh, supernatural belief uh, from the 19th century. Uh, in the 1880s, the, the seances, uh, stuff like that. So very likely that the idea of a poltergeist is going to be in a, in a 19th century book somewhere popularizing it on screen may this movie may have helped a lot i think mm -hmm. because it's for 1945 and the play which is earlier um did you look up the play this play um did i look up the play um no i looked up the film but i'm at the moment i've got poltergeist uh page open um and it's a it's german for rumbling ghost or noisy spirit yes and it's a type of spirit that can do physical disturbances such as loud noises and objects being moved or destroyed so literally what this uh spirit is doing yeah what Alvaro is doing here yeah um they can pinch bite hit and trip up people uh, they can do levitation of objects and such. Well, in this case, she's doing it by literally moving, moving the. Uh, yeah. Um, but she ended up nearly throwing the chair nearly at at uh, Ruth's head. He, he stopped her from doing that. So yeah. The the thing about a poltergeist, uh, also in the modern lore, is that it is an evil spirit. It's it it'll turn evil, which is what's exactly what she did. She started by by moving stuff around and then she she picked up a chair and tried to bludgeon a roof with it yeah in the in the supernatural um series that they they uh, so this this would be a ghost would be in the veil because she's she's in the veil she's not in this world she's not in the next world um and so but he can see her uh, because he's got that um esp going on with her or just plain personal connection with her um, and they say that their lore is if you if even if it's a, a, a pleasant person the spirit from being in the veil you will slowly go insane and you will go become a vengeful spirit yeah um, and, I, and I, so I it, think... has to, it has to end in in yeah. the supernatural uh, yeah. I do think that this Elvira is already the little bit everything all oh, her personality her her quirkiness of her personality on 10 percent up than it was from reality for from from when she was alive she's a more of a character of herself than she is herself i think um uh, but but he did say that she was quirky when she when she was alive so there's that yeah so she could be exaggerated quirky of herself there is a um, in the examples, there's a 1937 case of the House of Borley Rectory, um, and that was a famous house for the most, it's uh, known to be the most haunted house in England. Um, and 
so they were that was going on that information was going on from the third 37 39 all the way to 30 44 when the house was demolished so maybe that's why poltergeist was on well the, one of the, the things that poltergeists do i'm not sure if they're gonna say it like it's make noise is is bang mm -hmm. on walls and and uh, that's how usually in in real life people find they have a poltergeist is because there's banging in the night that no nothing nothing did uh stuff moved in the night stuff fell down in the night uh and it's a nighttime thing because they, they had the whole daytime routine. Yeah. And he, she was and not there. Until, the, yeah, that was clear. The, the she, moment the, the, the yeah. darkness was complete, she showed showed back up. So yeah, yeah. she's a nighttime thing, which is also correct to, towards the law. Uh, lore. Uh, poltergeists are nighttime things. Uh, most uh, spirits are, but um, so I think yeah, she's she's a straight up poltergeist. Yeah. And um, yeah, they have a problem now. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I think they have that. two problems, but <laughs> uh, yes, they have two that, problems. That will happen. Uh, they should get Miss uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Arcanti back in. Okay, yeah, exactly. And uh, then uh, it's uh, at the moment they're having having a a a, uh, a triangular uh, uh, two, uh, two three person love triangle. A love, love tri triangle. The love triangle and love triangles are never actually triangular. It's usually just that way. It's, it's this or that or yeah. That's exactly. So they have that problem. No. She she again has short sleeves very unusual in her previous dress because all the women are wearing long sleeves and she had those frills at the short sleeves which I happen to have short sleeves today but that's a very unusual spot and now she has short sleeves again i'm suspecting that this is margaret brotherford's her own wardrobe because i've seen her in other movies she always wears something uh, similar to this for in, in the future, uh, I haven't seen anything in the past, but the future from here on, because this is basically the role that landed her her film gigs because she was a, a, a theater lady. I think she's wearing her own wardrobe because she has this stocky shape and the wardrobe mistress is going to cater to young ladies of, of, of Ruth's size and not uh, uh, Margaret. I think it's her own wardrobe. I think she's straight up wearing her own wardrobe. Uh, maybe not that that frilly that old, maybe that old frilly dress is, is is from from a from a from a play where she wears something like that. I think she's wearing her own stuff. Okay, this is not unusual. So, this is not unusual for actors to have their own wardrobe to, to no, wear to do things. Indeed, um, uh, I've I've got her info here, and she did make her debut in thirty six in something else, but this role is definitely her establishing role in films and it talks about jaunty performance and the cycling in the kent countryside um the cape fluttering etc etc so um she this established a model for uh, yeah would, it basically basically it typecast her except that the type is so versatile that it doesn't it, it's not a bad thing it's not just case. versatile she's other than other women she is not an elegant lady she is not a man she is not um a, a, a kid she's not an old person she is a completely herself unique thing yeah. and, and the way uh, she's sitting you can see this in the shot with her, her legs apart yeah this is incredibly un unfeminine feminine and and very wrong for the for the time uh, ladies are not supposed to do that All, and only men do that so yeah. she's 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 uh with her with her mime she's showing that she's other uh, yeah. in that form I mean, not in a modern form of of uh, gender issues or anything like I, that I, I, don't, I would i would say yes Definitely yeah, but it's it, go for any, any now this person, this 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 uh, the character, if portrayed now, you would have to talk about uh, a gender interpretation. 
1945, people were not talking about that. No, but in, in she did. Sense. She is channeling something of the sort of of yeah. not fitting in the general uh, gender role of uh, uh, female or at that time, yeah. even older female because she's uh, she's and not. And then yeah. models for us how much the mannerisms of the women that we see on the screen um, are actually coded. They they were taught to the women to help hold themselves like that to move like that to specifically not move other ways um when you introduce pants and all of that stuff then uh, uh even then women weren't allowed really uh, to to spread their legs like that uh, sitting down because it still it still looks very male um no. but at least you can do it um it just, it just yeah but she's this, she's, is, this actually puts a mirror on how uh binary the the gender roles and and yes and she's not trying to establish herself as a uh pre-trans person at going towards male no. she is just establishing her as not the regular type of female yeah. uh, of 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 lady of her age uh which is she's sort of more the age of the um, the, vic the the doctor's wife the doctor's wife this is this the roof is like 30 and the doctor's wife is like 40 and this lady is 40 plus so she's more in the age range of the doctor's wife who wore a pink uh um a blouse and a black uh evening skirt uh so and indeed she's she's wearing a two-piece here she's not wearing trousers here she's wearing a skirt but she's wearing it uh, she the, the way if she, she were wearing trousers or if she was something. wearing trousers indeed yeah. uh, whereas at 1945 a lady especially a lady who cycles was allowed to wear slacks uh, uh, ma uh, female trousers wear slacks, so she, but she's not wearing the slacks. She also in the evening wear she wore, wore her 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 her, her uh, burgundy dress uh, in the long, which is what is for evening wear is proper, uh, but not uh, not a split skirt or anything like that. She's not trying to wear uh, the male things. She's just the shape that she is, and she's wearing the female well, things. But she's but she's, she's male. She's been comfortable in her movements because she would also just literally just put her uh, hands in her the, the small of her back and push yeah. the whole thing forward and go, what are you talking? Tell me. And it has a completely, yeah. you did, none of these ladies would be doing this because they're no, all and proper and square. But no men would do that either. That's, that's uh, stance. And I'll, I'll put it on the screen. That stance is not in any way male. It's just yeah. showing other something other than the norm is what she's showing yeah anything other than the norm <laughs> yeah and because she's so natural about it it just people will look at it and you can see you can see the ladies look at it uh, uh ruth even was burst out laughter when uh miss akati left the room at the previous evening because she was just so amused and she had been holding in her laughter for the whole evening um because she is a character, but the laughter wouldn't have been because of uh, uh, the comportment or how 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 she physically moves. It is the whole picture. It's everything. Mm -hmm. It's yep. it's the theatrics that aren't theatrics because she's so sincere about them, and it's, yep. Yep. it's the the, the um, uh, uh, she's she, she's oh she's very matter of fact about okay we're gonna do this crazy stuff now and it's gonna be this and this and this so don't be it's like almost like school teacher but <laughs> yeah, yeah something weird is going to happen now and i'm going to warn you in advance that something weird is going to happen yes, now yes. and now let's go and do it yes one of these three weird things are gonna could happen of course they all three happen because otherwise she wouldn't have mentioned them because it's written by it's a play but <laughs> that's the thing between life and and warning people about stuff that might happen if we do this then you know crazy shit might yeah. No, sorry, crazy smelly smell stuff might uh, hit the fan. Uh, in life, most of it doesn't. <laughs> but when it's it's in a script, of course, every single thing mentioned is actually going to happen. Yeah, of course, because that's uh, just that's just that's just good screenwriting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, note here is that she has the the teapot on a burner just sitting on the side table, uh, so it's a separate burner 
Well, that's a um, kettle. She's the kettle is on the side table. Yeah. In the living room. In the living room. Because Britain. <laughs> Britain, so that the tea is being being brewed and poured in in the living room where they sit down in nice uh yeah. nice nice cities. Yes. And I uh, it's possible that the square thing, the, the, the multifaceted thing under the teapot is actually the stove, but I wouldn't count on it. I, I think, think there's there's heat in there. It might also double for the heater in the living room because we are coming not out. Not one hundred percent sure. This is, this is this is very no old. no 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 no. It's it's uh, it's an electric one because I can see the here. This is the connection to the electric. Or, or uh, see this. This is the the, the plug. I'll take your word for it because I have no idea. But so this thing I'm is not just a side thing. That stuff. Oh, that's 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 some really lovely framing. Mm. Did you know? Did you notice that she was driving just now? She was driving. British hey. car. <laughs> Yes, steering wheel on the other side. So the person on the she's, right side is the one going. Very adept at at uh, the, the physics. <laughs> be, 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 they're going to be a, be a bit of a sight when they come to Foxton. <laughs> I was just thinking he's not looking at the road. No, because she is. She's driving. <laughs> Are your special effects, uh, uh, Oscar? But who was in the ambulance? That dear was the gardener. Well, I told you there was a guy there as well. There would have been a guy. So the Three. cook just walked out. Yeah. The maid is in bed uh, and will probably walk out. The gardener was taken away in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. The poltergeist has been very, very, very naughty. And and uh, him, his shoulder is out of whack. Yeah. This is not good. It's a good thing she was away for for the for the day because that yeah. stairs may end up somebody at the at the bottom of it. Possibly the maid already ended up at the bottom of the stairs. Oh well, cheer up, Mr. Condamine. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. This is definitely one of the most frustrating nights I've ever spent. So you can see now that because uh, we know she was uh, a dark redhead. <coughs> Or chestnut colored, because this color she's never not sure in life. But now she's a uh, high blonde, so I think she just gets completely discolored. And her sh the outfit she was wearing was like a powder blue, um, uh, right, uh, an outside yeah. outfit and that's now completely white, uh, off white. Now it's a sort of a white gray, well, green. Well, it's it's green because this, they're also putting on lamps on them as well as as, as the, the they've they've done a makeup on them. The hair has been changed and the outfits are, are, are all the same color and they put the, um, the light on it as well. They, 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 they have their own light, so yeah. that's how they do it. Think about the movie in itself, the color is nice, the costumes are great, the acting is good, good to very good. Uh, the story is also, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of pace. Uh, there's nothing in it that would need to go or anything. There's nothing, no, nothing that you're missing. Um, yeah, this is a good, straight up good movie. It's, it's to the test of time also. Uh, and the, and the color is an added bonus. Mm -hmm. Now, if they do it again, they and and they want the the ghosts to be in black in 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 color differently. They they do a, a trick where just the ghosts themselves are black and white. And here they chose to just do it with makeup and outfit and uh, extra lights. So um, the trickery that was in there and for which they got a a nomination, did they actually get the statuette for it? But um, <clears throat> uh, so with, with a scene where. Ruth goes up the stairs and Avara is sitting on the stairs and she go walk straight through her through her. That's that's an expensive effect. They did have to do a, a cutting up of, of of pictures and and rearranging them for the entire scene. For the, I think it's like two or three seconds. So it's like uh, 48, uh, 30, uh, 48 or or 72 um, 
uh, picture stuff to have to to jiggery pokery with. <laughs> Um, all the rest is done by tr by just by trickery and and double double images, mm -hmm. and and also the the stage, uh, the way they would have done stage, the way that Ivrara takes the vase of uh, tulips to Ruth, uh, where Ruth doesn't see it and 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 he and and he does uh, on the stage. She will just be doing it, and she, uh, Ruth would be doing everything but the pantomime, of course. Um, and that mm -hmm. would work very well. Um, so I, I think here, here by doing uh, one shot where a virus is in the picture and holding the vase and another shot where the vase is just floating in space is, works, works very well to show that off. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't really need it. But it needs it on, it, it, you can do it on stage without the special effects. But on, in the film you have special effects, you might as well use them. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and, and not anywhere is it uh, uh, ever made a feature uh, of it. Uh, when it did. So sometimes when you have these special effects, they they make such a feature of it it actually detracts from the story. It never does here. It's spot on the whole time. Yeah, no. it's in 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 current day uh, visuals. I would say it's very downplayed. But mm. they use this because it's difficult they, they, and you have to think about every single one of them and movies weren't like now when you have like special effects from the get go to the to the all the way to the end. Um, so you just use them where you need them and that works. I, I liked the I was wondering whether uh, Ruth was going to be green. She might have been blue or whatever it could have been a different uh, color yeah but they all but yeah. the same way. and i think the green is actually not green because the, these these color films from 1945 or or they always the scarlet car colors are a little bit too saturated they come on a little bit too strong so i think she's meant to be mostly colorless and not green she's just a little bit more green than i think was the intention Mm -hmm. Especially the okay. first shots of 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 their Evira gets better along the, uh, in, in the in, uh, as she goes along as she has more uh, with the two of them on screen it's it's less green but the very first shots of Evira are very very green very green yeah and it's also very possible that they simply filmed this thing in order for which it was uh, I mean there's no reason why why you should uh, not film it in order because uh, the, 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 most of it is just at that house. So the others, I mean, yeah, the sequence that is at the uh, the medium's house is going to be out of order for, filmed, but for uh, for the entire things that happen in the house, it can be just in order. So I think they probably got better as they uh, kept applying the makeup. They got better at, at, at applying it. So mm -hmm. by the time they get to Ruth in makeup, uh, they know what they're doing. Mm. Because the first first view of Elvira is a little bit gritty, I, I agree. Yeah, but it works for the movie because it it is also gritty and startling, and everyone's surprised, including Elvira. No, and <laughs> and, and it turns out that she died. Uh, Elf, uh, Elvira died uh, when she was she was sick with a pneumonia which i think she actually got on that boat with that uh, captain person i think that's implied and okay. then she was in the hospital and laughing at something on bbc and couldn't stop and died of a um, <laughs> of a heart stop stoppage but basically she should be wearing a nightgown so what she's wearing is not an evening gown but a nightgown and i think it's a little yeah. bit too much for a nightgown but okay oh yeah but they are wealthy people yeah, so, so it's, it's supposed the to nightgown be pretty much looks like a dress to us, but in those days it would have looked like a nightgown. Yeah, um, we can go through the movie and take a look at the outfits. The um, uh, Rex Harrison did not do it on the stage. It was a man named Cecil Parker, or Cecil. Uh, but Margaret Rutherford did play Madame Arcati on, on the stage, which is probably why she got this role. And there's a whole list of uh, all the revivals uh, who played whom. Uh, 
um, one notable one is that Charles gets played by Richard Chamberlain in 1987 um, and much later by Rupert Everett in uh, 2009. Um, Madame, Madame Arcati. I can't say that I know any of these. Oh yeah, well, of course, later, much later. So in 2014, it was Angela Lansbury. So that's pretty good. And oh, she did it twice. She also did it in 2009. So with Rupert Everett, that would have been Broadway. And then uh, before that, it was Penelope Keith uh, in 2004. So yay, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you need a strong actress for it. Uh, so here we're, we're back at the... Uh, so this is a dressing this, gown. This, this film does stand and fall with the with Marta Makati. Yeah, it does. Uh, here you have her. Uh, oh, it's awesome. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a dressing gown, this this thing she's wearing. Mm -hmm. It's not even a uh, <laughs> proper, proper garment. And so she's wearing the green outfit underneath here yeah this, so the the uh, this is edith. the outfit for the maid yeah i think I her think name is edith edith um good name for a maid <laughs> sure well it's the only name on the on the list that doesn't have mrs mrs or miss mr in front of it in the evening so this is this is uh hold she comes out of her bed like that and then over. Yeah, like I said, nightgowns and, and gowns on top of the nightgowns, they were dresses, they were different. I mean, it almost looks like she's wearing a bra under that, which I really think she is. She is. Um, she is. She's also <laughs> wearing a full head of makeup. But now, now she's actually wearing something over it, so yeah. it's matching, the... matching to, to the thing she's wearing this over it. Um, so, and you do so see is... that in all sorts of movies in of so the I think era. It's... Uh, this is the sort of thing that Elvira was wearing in her white version, but... Uh, but she was, yeah. Well, she, uh, yeah. It, it was... Um... But I can barely see the difference between this and a dress. Uh, yeah, but it's so it's the, yeah. the little the red bow is a tie-up, because that's a tie-around over the nightgown thing that she was wearing. So, and now it's a complete outfit and you can walk around in it. Um... But the next morning, she's already wearing something else here. He's wearing the day, day outfit as well. Sort of the business uh, with the lapels and the, and, and the, male, the, the, the male type pockets and uh, uniformy kind of look that it has. It, it, mm -hmm. it's, it is 1940s. Yeah, it is, I mean, they're nowhere near the A-line dresses that will be coming in in five years. It's it, it's yeah, completely not there five yet. Five years, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is lunch in the same outfit as breakfast, but I think she has... Oh, no, she's wearing the same... It's the afternoon. And then for the evening, she changes over into an evening outfit. And so does... Uh, we have the maid. Edith. And and him too. And I like that Edith um, is a is an almost forgotten character. She keeps popping up, but then it turns out that she's actually the the most important item. The reason all this is happening. It's um it is a it's a thing that looks like a two piece, but it is one piece. It's one dress because she stands up in a minute, and then you can see it. And then she is, so this is a night, supposed to be a nightgown thing that she's wearing. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so I think the whole green concept is probably intended for her to show up in black and white. I think she's supposed to be gray and not green. Yes, so a gray, everything's gray. Although when Ruth was in her death, uh, um, out, well, same outfit, but she was made up uh, dead, um her her lips were actually still quite red uh, her, her, look hers are also very red yeah. uh, uh um yeah. lips are very very red it's the only thing that has any color on her are her her eye uh her, her lashes which are very black and her lips which are very red which is the same on on uh on roof when when it when she goes yeah 
And now you can see that, that it is a two piece. So she's got the, the handkerchief in her, in her pocket there, ready for her to use in a, in a second, because she's going to use it. Um, <laughs> but it, it, is a, it is a one piece. It's, it, the, the top and the bottom are connected. Um, oh, OK. So it's not a blouse and skirt. You can see, you can see here it's, it moves, moves all together. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got a feline at the... Yeah. Um, and, and the skirt would have a round line because being a skirt. Right. Yeah, and I think she's meant to be gray and not green. It's just the a saturation of the colors has just bled. Yeah, and she's wearing now wearing a, a two-piece outfit. So I think this, this, this is top and the uh, and skirt. It was a much there was a much better look at it much earlier. Yeah, here. Uh, okay, so when she sits down, you can see she actually has a bow at the back here, and um, it's not very thick. You can see the way it moves; it's not very thick, and it's got uh, all this patterning, which is again it's more country because they are in the country. So country people wear patterns, city people don't. It's been a truth. Since time immemorial, let's call it 18, 1800 <laughs> to do that. Um, and she's uh, and she never wears anything floral. I've never seen her wear anything floral. It's always something geometric or or uh, plain. And the gloves, because she was out, uh, she would have had a hat, but she took off. But the gloves she keeps keeps on because she's actually visiting. So that's well done. Well, again, again, a case of this is filmed in the day that it's supposed to be set. It's not a period piece or anything yeah. like that. It's just now. So the, exactly. They do the things that they do in 1945. Yeah. Well, this is meant to be an evening dress, but I think she, this is just before she walks out to go to, to Madame uh, Agati and try and where it goes wrong so so this is evening wear please turn around so we can see you thank you that would be nice that's gonna do it a shame ah here we go this is what i'm looking for um yeah again slope the this v is is we're gonna be stuck with this v until the 1970s <laughs> I wish she wouldn't keep pulling her shoulders like that. It's not very easy. A little bit more. And with these side things, any movement you have with these shoulders is 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 gonna show. Now she walks out, and then she's wearing straight away. She's wearing a, a going out, a going out riding outfit, and she didn't change because she walked out of her own bedroom uh, straight into a new outfit. But yeah. I, but, yeah. So that's a little bit, that's a mistake in the movie, but we'll yeah. forgive them. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, the thing is, she's, she is getting that red dress on, and there's a whole lot of stuff going on with the red dress, but she, there's no clear reason why. That would have were... been the dress she would have been wearing if she wasn't now upset and wants to go out and get I think, this. And I think they were, she was just changing into an evening dress, but now so, uh, it's now seven o'clock, so it is evening. She's all, this is almost the same moment. Um, no, that's this is a little later. He comes back. Uh, sorry, she comes back. Um, yeah, and finds the house in problem. Oh, we get the, another view of the of the special effects. So that's good. And that's the only view of uh, the cook. Uh, she has no lines, but nope. she has credit. She is in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very eloquent look that deserved for the credits you need you need to cast somebody it's it's a play there's a person you'd have to maybe in the play there might not have been the cook actually and it would have been off screen but yeah uh, here they can show it there we have the oops look at that isn't that yeah it's it's great but completely needs redoing for a modern audience and no, you just set it in the same same period and so just do it as is. Oh no, I mean the special effect. Uh, oh so yeah, 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 sure. sure. On the... And she's miffed. <laughs> she is not a happy camper. No, no, no. Happy ghosty. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't actually very happy as a per as a as a live person either. Yeah, he. I don't know how he meets, how he picks them. Well, because he says at the beginning, the narrator says, 
we start with a happy marriage. And yeah. There was banter, but were they happy? I think they were happy. <laughs> but the moment Elvira shows up, no happiness. Uh, Charles tries to be happy for a bit, but um, that was that was just not a good plan, I think. What I remember from the first time seeing this uh, many, many years ago is the nut upsetness of everyone about being dead. It's just, there's nobody upset. Keep calm and carry on even though you're stone cold. No, dead. not even that. It's just, it's it's not about keeping calm and carry on. It's it's just it's just not even an issue. It's like okay, fine. I can get to take a holiday now. And the the motivation of Ruth to to be moved on is uh, tenuous because she has no motivation. Uh, why yes. would Vira want to move on? Because she said she was bored for for seven years. Uh, so the, the the underpinning of the of the, of the whole what happens afterwards is is very sketchy. Uh, I think uh, the uh, if you're going to do something like this, you have to establish that any ghost usually would want to pass on, so they'd have to have a reason to stay. So Ruth wanting to go is not so weird. Uh, she stayed only to to torment Alvara basically. Because Elvira killed her. So yeah. fair enough. And uh, so how does Edith figure into this? Because Edith ha is the medium. She, she, she has the gift and all of that. She's the, why, uh, why is she holding on to these? Uh, uh, maybe, uh, she, maybe she's not doing it very actively. Um, uh, no, she isn't. No. Uh, I think she just attracts these kind of things and they happen around her and then people have to deal with it. She's not mm -hmm. doing it. I don't think she's doing it deliberately. Uh, maybe she's just flexing her, her power a little bit and then this, this sort of thing happens. But it's like like st stretching a muscle, you know, if you don't, it starts to ache. So you have to. So I don't think she did anything deliberately. Um, but uh, amplified by the fact that Mar 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 uh, Madame Margati is there, uh, did made a proper manifestation so on the whole usually nothing happens but if you put two of these things together then something happens and that's exactly what happened and okay. that's why it also happens in the house when when the when the when they tried stuff at uh at her place it doesn't work but to try it here because because edith is asleep in in the other bedroom stuff starts to happen yeah no. she can only but talk only when you. when uh madame Aga Akati understood what the uh, how it was all put together because she was doing five six uh, versions uh, in in the house with them lying on the couch. Yeah. It is funny what that he says. Well, with uh, instead of action, shall we just think about this for a moment? It's like yes, dudes. First think, then do. That would be handy. I mean, and nobody's very th first think and then do. Every oh. very let's 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 do something something uh, something drastic and uh, <laughs> you know. She's also a very good actress. I, I I like her. I think I've seen her in other things. She never has a big role. Yeah, she doesn't get her own uh, Wikipedia page. Her name is Jacqueline Clark. So she did get uh, billing on on the on the second screen. I remember her name. Filmography: five films. This being the first one, it was forty-five through forty-nine. If if she went to the stage, that might be, but um, not much uh, known. She probably was on the stage. And, um, that's probably why she's here at all. Then, she did. Oh, she did do a Edith in the original Broadway production, so not the one in the UK, but the the first Broadway one. Um, everybody who is well, everybody who is in uh, British films in uh, until well now always they all are on the stage as well because you can't leave, the, the British film industry is not big enough to give everybody enough jobs that you can dedicatedly be. And you'd have to go to Hollywood. If if there's if if it's an actor who was also in Hollywood, then yes, they are only doing film. But if they're in England, they're also doing stage. Mm. They all do that. They all do that. 
So, did we like it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit slow. In 1945. But I, I didn't find it detrimental in slowness. There was a lot of banter going on, so... Yeah, I mean, I would watch it with a person. I would watch it um, uh, having a nice snack or something like that. Uh, could watch it for a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie. And not for Christmas movie. Um, it is not Christmas in any way, shape, or form. It's Halloween. Well, Dickens is, you know, the Christmas Carol is all about ghosts. Yeah, yeah but that's that's ghost stories. At, <laughs> that's that's a big, they did ghost stories at Christmas because they didn't have a Halloween. We have now a Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> um, but I, I don't see it as a not Christmas movie. I mean, it doesn't have anything Christmas in it. But um... I'm, I'm gonna we'll, gonna we'll have we'll talk about what Christmas movies ought to be. But they should have Christmas in them, or at least be. This yeah. is not a Christmas movie. The fact that it's in 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 a country that that is, that is co cold weather doesn't mean it's Christmas movie. Sorry, <laughs> it's Halloween. It, now it's a Halloween movie, and um, so that's what we can kind of look at. That yeah. So we actually have a lot of women in the cast, um, and the whole thing is still all about the man. Uh, let's just you know put put the finger on the sore spot. Um, yeah, okay, but but it's and it's, he's it's, not that interesting. He's he, well, that he's was certainly... Captain. What's his name? And she got herself killed over Captain. What's his name by yeah, catching well, pneumonia on no his boat? Whatsoever. I mean, really. really. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's got more women than men in it. Um, all women have a have a personality and uh, very well done. Um, I'm good with that. Worth, uh, worth seeing. Yeah, and Madame uh, Arkati. That's that's really what you watch this movie for, I think. Yeah. Um, and he's off in um, wherever it is with both his wives. He also has like the, these two uh, two mourning bands on his on his arm. He had all the time. Yeah, yeah, he put them in two, black. Two black ones. And they, now they're quite starkly white. And I think yeah. you'd have to look up how many and how big and how long uh, yeah. what type of morning band you wear and how long depends on what the relationship is. Yeah. Um, but I've never seen it on both arms, but since he's a double widower... Um, maybe we should look it up and see if it's only one for for, for a wife and if they did, simply did it for the, for the both of them because... And now he has two in in perpetuity. At least he's wearing a suit and not wearing even and not not wearing. <laughs> well, he was always wearing something sensible, which is useful. <laughs> they could have been caught out in his dressing gown, you know. <laughs> what era? This is coming up to the Second World War, and then it, the more black armbands are mentioned. Uh, for servants, they would wear them when there was a death in the household. Um, amongst polite company, the wearing of a simple black armband was appropriate. Uh, only for military men, uh, others who are were in uniform, so that would be servants as well, um, in the course of their duties, etc. Um, yeah, he she should be actually he should have been wearing completely black, I think, because he's the husband. But uh, yes, and that's going out of style at this point. So the the black armband was actually if you didn't wear proper uh, uh, morning attire, this this was seen as a very very bad version of it. Please but, do not. It said to be avoided. Do not do that. Um, ooh, and the men ooh. were expected to wear morning suits. Um, uh, da, 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 the whole shebang. Um, nah, this is so this is still before First World War. Sorry, this I didn't quite, quite catch that. See, the rules generally relaxed relaxed over time is what it basically said. So, black. Um, black also became a fashionable color in the late twentieth century. So that became difficult to actually use it as a morning color. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the skimpy black dress is is a is a standard, isn't it? 
Uh, yeah, and they wouldn't be wearing them. Uh, the ladies would not be wearing black unless they were in mourning at this at this time. Uh, time of life. Yeah. yeah. So there's really no mention of in between the First World War and nowish how much of a. So I think they what they do we can assume it was it was recorded in the time that it was set in that that was appropriate for him. If or it was been understated years earlier. A it would bit... have been. Too little, downplayed. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's. He he's doing it too. Uh, too downplayed, even for here. Yeah. It she's, matches it's, his uh, jovial spirit. She's she's newly dead. I mean, it was like the day or a couple of days after the funeral. You know, this this all this is happening, and he's still he's he's already not wearing black anymore. So I think that's. Yeah. Um, he, he really didn't care. I mean, with him, you'd have to wonder what what love actually was. Yeah, indeed. And he does hold a little rant at the end uh, to the unseen ghosts, saying, oh, finally, I'm rid of all women, including my mother and all the ex, uh, all the yeah. dead wives and all the other women, because there's like two or named other women that he also had <coughs> yeah. some kind of relationship. Actually, they, he does use the term sex life at the beginning of the film which is odd uh for 1945 i don't think they would do that in hollywood at that time i uh, know but then they're not in hollywood thank it you isn't. Goodness. Exactly. <laughs> so it doesn't go by those rules yeah. also her bed when she were when ruth wakes up in the bed and in two o'clock in the morning when she notices her husband isn't there that is a two-person bed no yeah, but strangeness with two beds and a, and a thingy in between that was uh, not, you know this yeah. is a european movie we don't no, no, do no 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 you got that wrong uh, no he was sleeping in the single guest bed in the other room she was expecting him there yeah but she was in a double bed yeah she, she did say D don't don't even kiss me good night or something like that she's like banishing him to the to the guest room uh, she, was, she woke up in a double bed let me see if I can. I like to notice such things. Well, this is the bed, and um, it's now occupied by somebody else. But that's the bed. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the marital bed. Oh, well, that's the bed. He's not in it. That's the that's the yeah that's the one I was talking about. So that's what the bed looks like when it's actually being slept in. When she, when uh, Elvira was lying on it, it was probably set up for daytime. And that's the other bed. He is a single guest bed somewhere. And he has all of that. And where does he sleep? On the bloody couch. And why she's upset about that, I am not clear. Because he got dr he got so drunk that he didn't make it to bed. That's why that's why she complains about it the rest of the day. It's quite later on at lunch. He she complains Same. that she's having a, a beer. Oh yeah, she 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 goes on and on about the alcohol, which is a you know it's a reasonable assumption. In 2014, the Metropolitan Museum of Art had a uh, ex exhibition called "Death Becomes Her: A Century of Mourning Attire," and that was the uh, uh, it was the 1815 through 1915. And they had a collection of all the stuff, so it's still not not late enough as as we want. But it also s describes that they mostly had the stuff from the women. Um, and the men's fashion, other than maybe colors, it, it's not interesting. It's the same from from about eighteen ten to about now. It's largely the same. We can talk about it a little bit, but not much. More, more of a question of oh, when did you stop to wearing vests, you know? And 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 on oh, the lapels change and stuff. Yeah, but it's um, so so little that it's not very interesting. To it does actually but. mention the black white black band, um, because they have found evidence that there was a simple black suit traditionally worn by men that had a hat and a white black band but um, th this meaning the white black band was not always worn as the suit was so it's the opposite of what he's doing you would you would put the right suit on and maybe an, a black band but in his case he only put the black band on mm -hmm. 
Uh, maybe because he was traveling. No, because he had it on earlier. Uh, yeah, he had it on uh, all the scenes after um, Ruth died. Yeah, and it's not the same suit as that he dies in. It's, uh, that's another suit, I think. It's the one he walks out uh, of the house in. I'm not sure. Oh no, no, that's just, it is the same suit. This is this is a scene from from where the uh, Madame says to to leave. And then we can pretty much assume that they were intending to make them gray because he's gray at the end, whereas the the women are actually still green. Yeah. Well, they're see-through at the end. We only get to see him in a see-through version uh, right at the end here. Yeah, these people very keep calm and, and carry on kind of people. Yes. Yeah. Nay, they just don't care. Nobody cares about anything in that thing. Which is, you know... Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of relaxing. The, the, the non-caring that happens in this movie. They're just I, I don't nothing faces them. They're like meh. You know like, what? If they, if um, uh, I mean she, he got somebody who was already a widow as well, because her man also died. Uh, I think you either get a little bit blasé about it, or you get get very very sad about it. So what are you gonna do? Well, they had moved on because they both of them had uh, decided they were they were going to they married each other. And and it was probably a really good match. Um, they both went through the same uh, smelly stuff, and uh, and they were happy to give it a go. So uh, yeah, true love? No, not true love. But it could still be a good marriage. There's no yeah, reason and, why and it if, can't and be a good marriage. All of this that never happened, they would be uh, happily ever ever. Uh, ever live living after and now they're happily ever death a, a dead after sure yeah one so apparently no death do you part because <laughs> he's got them both now and i was expecting her dead husband that's i literally was expecting him if, for this. if she had done another seance <laughs> I, I, he's fully somewhere out there going to meet up with them and it's going to be a happy foursome for for the rest of it um yeah maybe i yeah i i was expecting that the next the next ghost to show up was going to be her dead if husband. there had been another seance yes there would have been but they stopped doing seances at some point and, yeah. that, and then madame Margati got a good idea yes so madame Margati actually has power but she her power was vastly amplified by uh, uh the innate power that edith had yes um and that's, but Edith that's has no control over her power, um, which probably is is the reason why she's still a servant in a in a house right now. It's very sad. She's she's the saddest character because she has no agency whatsoever. Yeah, and when uh, at the, right at the end, when uh, she walk away, when she's snapped out of her trance, and then the uh, he gives her uh, some money in us. Money. It's like five yes. grand. <laughs> and then she sort of uh, sort of goes, oh my god, uh, uh, this honest dis uh, proposal. I think what she no, no, no. What she's thinking is she lost time. She lost a bit of time yeah. in, and she doesn't know what's going on. on and she yeah. she thinks anything could have happened. She thinks he he slept with her, and this yeah. was his thank you. But it happens to her all the time. That's this, the thing. Uh, <laughs> it's this time all the time. Yeah, no wonder she had such a Ooh, look on her face through the whole thing, because that's her life. That is her life. She has no clue what's happening. She probably can't even vocalize uh, all the strange things that happen to her, because she lives in a world where things are probably happening, and nobody else sees them. And, and I she's also think... being ignored because she is a, a, a servant, so most of the time she's just basically furniture. <laughs> the not so sexy lamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and she doesn't remember anything that happened during the trance, so she doesn't know how she solved the problem. She's probably aware that she caused the problem, but she doesn't know how she solved it. She also doesn't know that it got solved. So mm -hmm. she is going about with still what happened, but also her master is now left. And dead. Uh, 
she and did. He, he, he died on the same she road did, that she, she died. She missed the whole leaving and went straight to the he died thing. Yeah. And um, there was nobody else. So unless there's a distant relative, I guess she's still sitting in that house going, at least I'm nobody's servant anymore. No, I don't think that she wouldn't inherit the house. It's not hers. She would she would go to go on to the next job. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. It's a very sad character. <laughs> okay, we're ending this thing on an on a super oh, very sad, sad note. That's a serious note. We thought, we thought it was such a happy Oops. movie, but then it's Halloween. Also, woo. Ah. <laughs> happy Halloween. This is uh, my opinion and. And my opinion. And we're sticking to our opinions. <laughs>